Welcome to the Colby Cast, episode 87. Thank you for joining us. Today's episode is all about Colby Academy's homeroom program. Colby homeroom instructors, Mrs. Crawford, Mrs. Doucette, Mrs. Kim, and Mrs. Mamola join us to provide us with a glimpse into this wonderful program. We see that students receive not only academic support in the homeroom program, but also useful life skills and personalized guidance while being immersed in a faith-filled community. Whether this student is full-time online or not yet participating in any online classes through Colby, the homeroom program provides an excellent opportunity for them to participate more fully and benefit from the Colby community. We hope that you'll enjoy the show. Hi there, I'm Bonnie, liturgical musician, popcorn and podcast fanatic, and Colby homeschooling mom to four lads and lasses of middle and high school age. And this is Stephen, homeschooling father of five and director of development for Colby Academy. Enrollment season is upon us. We're not finished with the school year, but it's time to start thinking about next year. Today, Stephen and I welcome some familiar voices back to the Colby cast, Mrs. Kim Crawford, Mrs. Michelle Kim, and Mrs. Jenny Mamola. We also get to meet a much-loved and often-mentioned online instructor, Mrs. Brittany Doucette, who I feel is one of those like six degrees of separation. We hear about Mrs. Doucette a lot from our previous um, <laughs> Colby cast guests, so we're delighted to get to meet you today in ourselves. Welcome, everyone, to the Colby cast. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here, Bonnie. It's great to have you back. It's great to have you with us, Mrs. Doucette. Well, it's, it always catches me by surprise. Enrollment season, I remember, I think I've told this story before, but I, I can't help tell it again. When my oldest child, who will be a senior next year, was quite small, I got to thinking about preschool around about April and started calling around like, I'm interested in preschool next year. And they were like, well, we did that in January and February. And I was thinking, what in the world? But... I got with the program after that, so here it is, time to start thinking about next year. And what we would like to do today is focus on a, a course that Colby offers online that has really grown a lot and offers a whole range of great things. So as families are thinking about enrollment for next year, I want to keep in mind this homeroom course that's offered. So let's catch up a bit with those who have been here before. Mrs. Kim Crawford, how have you been? I've been terrific, and okay. I've been very excited to teach Homeroom 12 this year because I have my very own senior, and what you just said about, you know, time to register for preschool, oh, whoops, missed that. The first kid <laughs> is so often the guinea pig, yep. and so having my senior and teaching senior Homeroom this year has been really great because I've experimented on my own children and then experimented mm -hmm. on the Colby children, and it's been really synergistic, so it's worked out pretty Pretty well. Oh, good. <laughs> it's a having, it's a reckoning really to think about our children being seniors, isn't it? Mrs. Crawford is the chair of the English and Literature Department. So we've we visited with Mrs. Crawford on a, on a few other episodes, along with some of these other ladies. We'll be linking all these episodes where they've appeared before in our show notes. So check them out to get to know them more and hear them speaking on a whole range of things. Mrs. Mamola, how have you been? Doing really well, thank you. Very, very busy. I also have a senior in high school this year. I wish that he and I had been able to take Mrs. Crawford's class. <laughs> I've seen some of her PowerPoints and there were things where I thought, oh, okay, I should have done that a while ago or looked into that. But yeah, and I've been enjoying, I teach homeroom 10 this year, which has been nice because in nine grades, and this is the first time that I had the 10th graders by themselves. So that's been fun. Great. So you're the department chair of the foreign languages and homeroom, and you teach French for Colby, as we learned in the previous episode. So I see your name come up a lot, and it's great to be back visiting with you. Mrs. Kim, we met you in our in our parent in-service episode, talking about essay grading. That was a great conversation. It's so great to have you back. I've been looking forward to talking to you again. How have you been? I've been doing great. And we had a completely different kind of admission process yesterday. We're going on a trip later this year. And we have to board and kennel our dog. And so he had to go to doggy daycare meet and greet yesterday. Oh. I'm happy to announce that he passed with flying colors. We were all laughing last night at dinner that our dog passed the rigorous admission process into <laughs> doggy daycare. I get to take a deep breath this year because 
I have a freshman and a junior in college this year, so we don't have to mess with any of that college admission stuff, just our dog. Nice. Nice. Uh, but I've been really excited this year to be leading homeroom nine, and I'm at the other end of the high school spectrum. I've been gifted with welcoming and introducing all of the freshmen to their high school journeys and helping them to get that started in a very holy and fun and exciting way. So it's been a fun journey for me. We did an episode with a, a 10th grader this year about the freshman year experience at Colby that we'll put that link in the show notes to that's a, a, a new chapter starting. I mean, it is for everyone starting high school, but there's something about starting the, the Colby high school years. It's great to have you back with us. You're teaching a number of high school English courses as well for Colby in addition to the homeroom classes. So very good, very good. And now we get to meet Mrs. Brittany Doucette, who teaches a number of things for Colby. How are you, Mrs. Doucette? Thanks for coming. Good. I'm so glad to join you all. I have been a huge fan of the Colby cast, so uh, it's Thank good you. to be here. I too have a child going to college in the fall, so I guess we all have a, a lot in common. We've seen the, the whole grade gamut here, and so uh, hopefully we can pass on those tips to our students. Certainly, yes. Tell us a bit about yourself, though, and your family and your background and how you happened upon Colby and you've brought so many wonderful teachers and families to Colby along with you. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, well, I'm part of the Colby military community, which <laughs> seems to be quite large here. I am a Navy spouse. We have four children and are currently stationed in coastal North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I've been in Catholic education a long time, but the military definitely moves us quite often. So I was looking for something more portable and was blessed yeah. to find Colby. Uh, this is my fourth year, fourth year here. And okay. in those four years, I have been in three states. So case wow. in point, uh, I teach in the theology, English, and of course, the homeroom departments. Wow. Okay. So with this homeroom class, it's come a long way since its inception, and it combines study skills, individual teacher and student check-ins, and a study hall. I'm, I'm curious because I'm relatively new to, to Colby, so especially for our families who maybe haven't really heard about the homeroom program, or even those that maybe, as Bonnie was saying, tried it early, but it may have changed a bit since then. So yeah, I'd love to hear more about it, what, what the homeroom program is like. Well, I see the homeroom program as one more way that Colby tries to surround students with support. When you think of the homeroom teacher in all schools, it's often considered your, your home base. That's your teacher. Um, help students plug into the wider school community. And I think that's what we do here. We really try to um, connect them to new friends, work on skills that are going to help them across all their classes. That's great. And so what, is, what are some of the things that that each of you do in your own class or the homeroom classes to help students? What, what's, what are they going to see when they, they join your classes? Well, a major goal of middle school homeroom is to assist students in becoming more independent learners. That's what I really focus on as the sixth grade homeroom teacher here. Uh, they are making a big leap from the elementary years where they might have had only one teacher, their mom, or a couple teachers if they come from our elementary program. Uh, maybe they've never learned online before, so there definitely is a big learning curve. Uh, some of the topics that we do in sixth grade, uh, definitely we want to teach them about planning, goal setting. Their, their mother is not like the primary director. We're really trying to help them transition to um, being able to, to take the initiative more, uh, learning how to take notes, uh, review teacher feedback on assignments. We also try to look at the whole person. So we work on social development. Uh, we talk about conversational skills, digital citizenship. We're going to do a lesson on friendship. We also do a lot of fun things in the homeroom. We play games, we do virtual field trips, and of course we're a Catholic school, so we mark a lot of the liturgical year activities, talk about saints and these types of um, different feast days throughout the year. When I conference with students, they especially seem to enjoy learning about each other. I think many of our classes, we do some kind of student spotlight. And of course, Colby students live all over the world. So uh, it's interesting to hear about their different experiences. So that's a little bit about what we do in sixth grade. 
my daughter is in Mrs. Doucette's sixth grade homeroom, and it's been a great experience for her. That's good to hear. Thank you for all you've done there. Thank you. Mrs. Kim, you said you teach freshman homeroom? I do. I have the ninth graders this year, and uh, some of the things that we do are the same as what Mrs. Doucette was just describing. Because the ninth graders are embarking on this exciting and rigorous high school journey at Colby, we have a particular focus in ninth grade with helping them to make that adjustment, not just academically, but also personally and in their spiritual lives as well. So we adopted a patron saint for our ninth grade homeroom this year, Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati. And the students have been enjoying his patronage of our homerooms immensely. He really makes an ideal patron for our youth today. You know, he faced conflict within his family. His parents had a very troubled marriage. Uh, he lived in the time when fascism was dominating Italy. So he and his friends spoke out uh, politically and uh, socially as well. The ninth graders find him very inspiring and a great source of strength and hope for them in their own lives. We're looking at 12 habits of Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati that they can imitate this year. And one of them is to build holy friendship groups. And that was our first habit that we looked at from that lesson, they started a Catholic youth book club on their own independently, and they studied Interior Castle by St. Teresa of Avila, and they're doing St. Robert, a book by St. Robert Bellarmine next. The small group that did that book study did a presentation to the homeroom class two weeks ago. They ran that whole session. It was so beautiful to see them taking that on. It's very empowering to them to take that increased role. Uh, within homeroom and then that's extending into their their studies as well. We do have those one-on-one -on -one conferences as well and it, that's been a really good outlet for them to be able to say, Mrs. Kim, I just am having trouble keeping up with these writing assignments. What can I do? And so I'll tell them about scanning and about breaking the reading assignments up into smaller pieces and to have a small goal for each day. And it's been so exciting to me to come back to that next conference and to hear them say, Mrs. Kim, I tried it and it worked. Everything's going so much better. So they're really gaining not just uh, ways to grow in, in academics, but also in, in those Catholic friendships and in their spiritual lives as well. So we've been having a lot of fun and I think we're, we're accomplishing a lot. Yeah, it sure sounds like it. That's really neat. I love this idea of, of befriending Pierre Giorgio Frassati. Mrs. Crawford, let's hear about your 12th grade homeroom class some more. Oh, man. Well, let me tell you what. Middle school is generally considered not to be the finest time of one's life. Mm -hmm. But I kind of want to go back to sixth grade because that homeroom <laughs> sounds really fun. Yeah, does, and yeah. with Mrs. Kim's uh, transitory ninth grade year and just learning how to high school. And mm -hmm. so I do a lot of, uh, you know, six, nine, 12, their transition years, right? And so we work a lot on transitioning. They're wrapping up their high school career. They have one glorious year left. But they're really starting to think beyond that and think about college and think about even beyond college, what they want to, you know, that big question, what do I want to do with my life? Yeah. And so we focus a lot on all of those transition things. We talk about college, we talk about financial aid, we talk about careers, but we also talk about bigger life skills like time management and critical thinking, which, you know, doesn't end just because you're not in school anymore. Hmm. And we talk about how to maintain a healthy spiritual life, especially in college when, you know, people tend to perhaps wander away from their faith. Yeah. And, um, you know, I make the point that you can always come back, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> the church is always yes. ready to receive you if you do wander away, yeah. that uh, you can always come back. And we talk about mental health and we also talk about adult skills. And for that class, I asked them what they wanted to know about. I'm like, you guys. What do you feel like you need to know? And it ran the gamut from how do you read people to how do you drive? And so we kind of touched on all of it. We talked about finances a lot. And, and uh, you know, I gave them dire and stern warnings about credit card debt. And, <laughs> um, and so we just had a, a really good time with that. 
And I love the ninth grade focus on choosing a patron saint. And for us, for all our different topics, we actually chose a saint of that topic for like time management. We chose St. Expeditus and for mental health, we talked about St. Dymphna and, you know, just being a student, St. Thomas Aquinas. And so we, we had like a, a survey course of saints. We, uh, began our and ended our classes with uh, intercessory prayers for those saints. And uh, the kids just, I find that by the time they get to senior year, they know how to student pretty well, right? But I'm finding that they're a little stressed out about yeah. um, just all kinds of things, right? Living in the pandemic society for the last two years has been tons of fun for everybody. And that is... Um, you know, why we talk about things like mental health and self-care. And they are also in this transition year, they're also a little stressed out about the next step, right? About launching into college, launching into adulthood. And so we spend a lot of time, and in fact, the kids called it, we had one student who, you know, named it for the whole semester. He's like, this is our chill hangout time. (laughs) <laughs> and so that's what we called it. We called it, all right, nice. good morning, everybody. Welcome to Chill Hangout Time. And we just had a wonderful time. It was a great brain break. It was a really good time to get to know each other in a way uh, different from how we get to know each other in the classroom. And we built a little community. In fact, Homeroom 12 is only that first semester of senior year. Hmm. And we loved it. And so we have plans to meet twice more this semester, even though no one has to. They're like, can we please meet? And I was like, yes. And so I picked some dates. And so uh, the first one is in a couple of weeks. We'll see, you know, they might have moved on. We'll see who shows up. But the fact (laughs) that they wanted to, the fact that they wanted to continue just speaks volumes about the community that we build in homeroom that they want to participate that they want it to continue and that they see and get value from it and so we've just had a really great time with it and i've I'm, i've been so pleased to be part of the homeroom department this year since this is my first year teaching it that's such a good point mrs crawford about uh, the homeroom is you know one thing we should probably say is nothing is strictly required for it they don't have assignments they don't have uh, required books they don't have to submit notes of the course of the different class if they're absent and yet it's just as you said like everyone comes Uh, the attendance is extremely high they stay from bell to bell uh, so i think it is providing a real service to to uh, what they need to round out their colby experience certainly is. I, I've seen my, my seventh grade daughter. I, I heard her say earlier this week, she was kind of thinking through what she had on her agenda this week. And she said, well, I can work on that during study hall. I can do this during homeroom time. I can ask about this during that. So it's it's working. It's, it's working. It's doing great. Mrs. Mamola is the chair of the homeroom department and instructor of it yourself. Let's hear about your class. Sure. Yeah. I teach homeroom 10. And like I said previously, we, um, had our grades combined and so as you can see with the growth of colby enrollment in general the demand for homeroom also increased so we were able to separate the grades which is nice because we can cater the experience more to the students for exactly where they're at and so yeah i teach 10th grade homeroom um along with uh dolores mihalik i'm probably saying her last name wrong and 10th graders you know they're sort they're in the thick of it with high school it's an age with a lot of contradictions, kind of like they're not quite upperclassmen, but they're, you know, they're not freshmen. They, they mostly know what they're doing, but they're still a little angsty. And um, so I found with the quarterly check-ins that I do with them, they're pretty stressed out because their, their, their coursework is getting more dense and more challenging, but also their life is getting more complicated. You know, a lot of them are learning how to drive. Some of them are getting jobs, you know, whatever's going on in their social life. So they, you know, they're, they're in that trend. It's not the, as big of a transition as some of the other grades, but that's kind of a, a half step up in the world and in life. And so they, uh, They've got their own things they're going through, but the format of my class is very similar to what um, the previous teachers have explained. We try to touch on 
study skills and, you know, things that you need in high school, like, you know, time management is huge and you could talk about it forever and they still won't get it for a while. It takes a lot of repetition. I mean, we as adults deal with time management problems, right? I mean, I know I do. Mm -hmm. So tricks, you know, tr time management tricks. I try to help them with a lot of different strategies for just getting through, you know, the heavy reading and just the, all the things that they have to do. So one thing I wanted to explain, which I hadn't really talked about, is that previously with Homeroom, it used to only be a, um, a regular 50 minute class time. And we would just kind of have study skills, spiritual life, and maybe something fun, like a little community building activity. This past year, this is the first year we've expanded the course to uh, the study hall and quarterly check in. So let me just explain what those are. And this was just a lot of uh, a lot of people talking a lot of a lot of people contributed to this idea but it was just the idea we really wanted colby students to have yet another person at colby getting to know them on an individual basis and to give them more individual support especially with the timing of the pandemic and also just our increased enrollment we wanted them to have another adult who knew who they were and who was talking to them and asking them about themselves specifically so we felt like homeroom was a good place to do that and so what we do now is every class period is an hour and a half and about 30 to 25 minutes per class period. What we do is we have a study hall time. So students are allowed to um, talk to each other about classes and hang out. And we also, we let them chit chat too. It doesn't have to all be academic talk. They're allowed to kind of chat with each other, but then especially, um, you know, they, they work on homework together or quiz each other, any, any kind of class, questions they may have, which is awesome to have them in their specific grade levels now, isolated to that specific grade, because a lot of them have the same teachers and are taking the same classes, so they can really talk about that. And then while that is going on, the homeroom teacher meets with students individually, and we call them quarterly check-ins because we meet with each student once per quarter. And in the quarterly check-in meeting, we are meeting, uh, talking to them individually just about how their academic and personal, well, not, not too personal, <laughs> how their lives are going. We don't get too personal, uh, but we're just checking in to make sure that all is, all is well. And if they need any extra support, we try to help them find that. We try to get them recommendations. Like I know Mrs. Kim was giving them some strategies about getting through the reading and we all kind of do similar things. We take a look at their grades. We take a look at the classes they're taking. We give them a chance to talk about it. We give them a chance to say, this is, you know, this has been hard for me or or also celebrate. I have a couple students who every time it's like it's a, it's like a celebration, you know, like, hey, I got my grade up in this class and I'm feeling really good about that. And this is awesome. So it's not all it's not it's definitely not all heavy. It's fun. They a lot of them, a lot of them just want to talk to an adult and they're proud of themselves. So anyway, I feel like I personally have been really blessed by that. I do feel like it's an awesome service for the students. And that's one reason why I really wanted to do this podcast, because I wanted Colby parents to realize that that is a service that we offer, because um, I think it's so important, and especially with just the potential isolation that many of our families have faced with the pandemic and weather and all these things. And when you're already an online student, I just wanted them to have another chance to to have someone at Colby getting to know them and to feel, to feel seen and to have somebody to talk to. So... Sure. Anyway, that's that's yeah, what my <laughs> yeah, my wife and I are definitely homeschooling parents. I mean, we are we really consider ourselves to be homeschoolers, but we've always gotten our children into classes, online classes of one sort or another, just because then they do have that. Um, well, if they get to discuss with other people, and they, um, but then uh, we would see as they did it year after year, they would gather these groups of friends through these things and then they're starting to when they can have the opportunity meet up with these other or and then we become friends with their families and i was going to ask this question but it's already been answered in what you said it seems this is the a perfect thing for a homeschooling family who maybe they don't want to jump right into one of those rigorous online classes with deadlines and every and everything but to do this where you get the support and you get to meet other classmates people who are studying the same things and think in a similar way. It just sounds like a wonderful thing. And it seems like homeschooling families that maybe are hesitant to try these things should, should jump in and try one of these just to, just to get that experience. 
Well, and as you can see, we have a dream team of homeroom teachers, and this is just, this is a sampling of them, but really it's as uh, coordinating this department this year, I've just been so blessed um, getting to know them all and watching what they do. I'm so inspired. They're so creative. They're so passionate. They really care about the students. And so if you, if you do um, homeschool full time and maybe only dabble in one or two online classes, you're, you're missing an awesome opportunity to have these people uh, working with your child, but also for the students, like you said, the, they get to know kids they wouldn't otherwise. And then also the full-time online students, they'll, they'll, meet stu they'll meet teachers and students they've never met before um, and bond in that way. But yeah, we really do have the dream team of, of teachers. One thing that you mentioned, Mrs. Mamola, is, you know, perhaps folks are missing out on homeroom and that it comes with full-time enrollment. I really feel that every student would benefit from homeroom. It is not a required class, but it is such a valuable class. And like Mrs. Doucette was saying earlier, there's no extra work involved. You put into it as much of yourself as you wish, but you don't have to turn in papers. You don't have to do presentations unless there's fun get to know you ones. And I really feel like it's of benefit to everybody. And you mentioned earlier that, um, you know, everyone does the same thing with the check-ins with the students and something else that I feel like we all do in different guises is time management. Like sometimes topics need to be talked about every year. Like we're always going to talk about God. We're always going to bring religion into the classroom, which, you know, we should. We're a Catholic school, right? But one thing that keeps coming up is time management. And I find that even if something gets repeated every year, and maybe the students are like, oh my gosh, this topic again, it is so instructive because, uh, and I never can remember if it's Heraclitus or Herodotus who said, you know, no man steps in the same river twice, not the same river, not the same man. And there is value in actually, you know, it's very Ignatian and classical in nature to repeat something when you have it presented year after year, it's eventually going to sink in, hopefully. Um, I could have used yearly reminders of time management since I have the time management skills of a carrot. But <laughs> with that, uh, you know, you have different people presenting their takes on it. And, and you know, it's going to hit someone you know, it's going to sink in from so-and-so's presentation this year and that you have different people talking about it in different ways every year. Something is going to appeal and stick out and stick with that person. And there's just so much value in that. Oh, gosh, we're talking about time management again. No, let's talk about time management all the time. And let's talk about, you know, friendships and how to be a good friend and how to make friends as an adult all the time because there's so much value in that repetition, especially when you have different people presenting it to you in different ways. And also I've had amazing student commentary on these topics. I, I've had students who give their own personal tricks and tips about time management. And I'm sitting there going, you should have taught this part. <laughs> you know, this is so <laughs> impressive. And I think it's great for students to hear that from another student, like, oh, okay, this is actually a thing I could do. This is pretty simple. And so I know that a lot of the homeroom uh, classes will ask students to like bring in, like, like hey, can bring in your planner. Show us what you do with your planner or the way that you deal with your assignments or, you know, other things. In my class, we were doing this uh, memorization game the other day just to work on like different tricks for memorizing things. And I had a student who blew us all away because he has all these little techniques he's taught himself and uh, he shared it with everybody. And they were beyond what I had brought up. And it, so stuff like that is really cool because they get to know the other students and see, again, things that they don't, they may not have time to talk about in their regular academic courses. I was going to also add that uh, something we haven't mentioned yet is in the homeroom classes, many of us invite uh, guest speakers to our classes. So it's not always just the homeroom teacher presenting all the information or, or facilitating activities. Uh, we started, I don't know, two or three years ago, it started, uh, we decided to start bringing in more and more guest speakers. And that has been an incredible experience as well. We have a lot of uh, Colby teachers and administration come to talk to our students about a wide variety of topics. Just this week, I had Mr. Bayarski come in and he's the director of academic services, but he talked about discernment because he, he talked about his own journey with discernment and 
giving them uh, advice on good discernment and how to go through that process. I know Mrs. Kim just had a really cool uh, pro-life speaker come in. My husband happens to be a theology teacher with a few great connections. So I've been tapping into those connections outside of Colby and having some of those people come in. Dr. Hasler, who teaches Homeroom 11, he has some amazing connections in the Catholic academic world. People like Joseph Pierce and he's, they've, so his homeroom students have had the joy of having, of getting those speakers to come just to their class. They get the unique experience. So again, it's another, it's just another opportunity for Colby students to hear something new and be exposed to these ideas and these wonderful adults who are willing to give their time and talent to the Colby students. Mrs. Mamola brought up one of my favorite parts of Homeroom, the guest speakers. And we've only had two so far in Homeroom 9, but they've been a, a very powerful experience for the, for the students. And it fulfills such an important need in these ninth graders, as well as for, you know, the middle school and other high school levels. Um, Maria Montessori talks about the the need for the adolescent to have these mentors in the faith that are outside of the family. So in addition to having the Colby teachers who are just phenomenal examples of uh, devout Catholic living, they have these outside guest speakers now who are coming in as additional mentors in a particular area. And I was loving listening to Mrs. Crawford talk about how important it is to hear the same topics sometimes, you know, from year to year to year to reinforce how important they are. But then Homeroom also gives us this incredible opportunity to focus in on timely topics as well. So I was sharing with my Homeroom 9 students about the Supreme Court Dobbs case. I said, do you, can, do you realize this? You're living in this time when Roe versus Wade might possibly get overturned in just a matter of months. Let's celebrate our pro-life identity as, as Catholics. And so we had a guest speaker come on, uh, someone who runs a pregnancy resource center in London, England. And so not only were they able to hear about how someone is living pro-life in an incredibly powerful way. Her son is a student in one of our homeroom sections, but they also got to hear it from this worldwide perspective. And there was this incredibly powerful moment where she said, you know, we in the pro-life community, worldwide community, we look to the United States for inspiration and hope. And that was so incredible for the ninth graders to hear that, right? Because, yeah. you know, not to get political, right? But we're living in a time of, of great uh, strife in, in our nation. And that was such a beautiful moment for me to hear her uh, give that reassurance. And I think that the students really appreciated that. So the guest speakers are a really um, incredible part of, of the homeroom program. That is fantastic. And let me tell you what, I would listen to anybody talk about anything with a British accent. So <laughs> that is right. really Indeed, fun that right? you got somebody <laughs> to <laughs> an international resource to come and talk about something that is, you know, really close to all our hearts. And that is a big issue everywhere. Good work, Mrs. Kim. Oh, why, thank you, Mrs. Crawford. <laughs> And besides the, you know, reaching out beyond Colby, the guest speakers are great within Colby. Uh, you know, students want to hear from their quote principal. And so Mrs. Langle comes in and says hi to all the students. And this semester with enrollment starting, uh, I bring in the sixth grade uh, grade level advisor to come talk to the students about different courses because they are so used to their parents scheduling everything and just not even knowing what's happening. But now that they're getting in middle school and especially high school, they should start having those conversations with their parents about, oh, I think I learn math better in the morning or I need to do it in the afternoon because I'm not a morning person or I really want to learn Latin this year. I mean, these kinds of conversations are important to, to start helping their parents with navigating the, the scheduling. So the homeroom is a nice place for, for students to get those kind of school assembly kind of speakers just to get to know their own administration. 
Mrs. Powers, our new 9 through 12 Dean of Students, made her rounds of the homeroom classrooms the past few weeks. So that was, uh, it's always a treat to get to see and, and hear from Mrs. Powers. Although we were joking around with her and telling her that we didn't recognize her because she didn't come in costume. I was going to ask about that. <laughs> but it was a great opportunity for the students because she, she let them know, you know, I'm here, I'm your new advocate, right? That's my role and I want to be here for you and I'm going to be working on ways to, to be a better advocate for you. So I was really thankful that she did that for, for the students. And I love how we're bringing in outside resources, but also using who we have at our fingertips. Cause you know, sometimes we forget the wealth of different experiences we have at Colby because you know oh that's you know that's my teacher and you know I've done all kinds of crazy things in my life that I love to talk about <laughs> and uh, just the very many ways that we can all serve each other because I've also had Mr. Byarski visit our classroom not to talk about discernment but to talk about living a faithful life when you're super busy i mean he has five little boys and we also had mrs langle come talk about time management because she is the time management queen mm -hmm. and you know we were talking earlier about how homework uh doesn't happen in homeroom she actually gave us homework she um <laughs> challenged us all to make our beds for a month and uh, that that is a great way to get up and go and you know get things done and you know even if you have a train wreck of a day hey you made your bed you did something and so uh, we really are lucky to have such a, a wealth of personality and experiences really at our fingertip tips and especially since we're all over the country you know we can tap into almost anything anywhere and that's that's really unique and really cool and mr hayden you brought up an important point earlier that i did want to come back to about how this resource is available to families who are are not online students or full-time online students, I have a pretty healthy proportion of my homeroom students who are not full-time online students this year. And they might only be taking one online class or even no online classes and are just taking homeschool classes. And it's really a, a fun opportunity for them to get together with other Colby students their age. And even though they may not be in the online classes, um, around midterm time for the online classes, one of the homeschool students said, oh, you you guys, I'll be praying for you because I'm not at midterms yet. <laughs> but then in a couple of weeks, when you guys have midterms behind you, you'll have to say extra prayers for me while I take mine. So it really does give the all of the different Colby families, no matter what your course load is, uh, an incredible opportunity to build those bonds and to help one another too, because everybody can work on their school assignments during that study hall time. They get on mic and practice recitation. They do uh, language practice um, on mic or in the little chat boxes. They use the whiteboard for math. So it's it's a tremendous opportunity for them. Yeah, especially since everybody is everybody has kind of had to experience the, this online and distance thing over the last couple of years. You know, so it's um, we would always tell people like just because you're you're worried about there's not a lot of people locally or you're worried that your child doesn't have a lot of social interaction with their peers and normally you say well your family's pretty sufficient for that for the most part but still it's nice to get those those other friends that you that you'd meet outside of your and this sounds again like the the perfect opportunity to do that where you've got good faithful catholic people who are interested in learning the truth, um, all of these things that they could just come in and, and get that, that experience. And then, you know, my, my children did things like that, but then eventually it expands even beyond the homeschool. So like my son is taking a class on Shakespeare in a, in a different online thing. So, but he and these other people that he's with now get, they get online on a zoom or something every week and they read through the Shakespeare play together before they go in and discuss the Shakespeare play in class. And not, I mean, that's just a fantastic. It's like my son is spending an hour or two reading Shakespeare with his friends online outside of class. Okay, this is what I like. <laughs> I can go for this. So yeah, just, this sounds wonderful. I, all my children will be in it next year, I think so. Yeah. I had students email me recently 
who I had my first year of teaching homeroom and now they're seniors and they were like, Hey, by the way, we started this whole, whole other club and we've been meeting this whole time. Mm -hmm. And it was like, a one of them I know is very artistic. So I think they do some art stuff and anyway, but they get together all the time and they were all in that section. So, but like you say, it's just another awesome social outlet and you know, it's a great place for them to meet like-minded kids. That's so exciting that they made their own club because if you go in student bios sometimes you'll see that you know all these clubs that they've created yeah. there's a waffle club and there's a green versus blue club you know i like to write in the chat box in green well i like to write in the chat box in blue and <laughs> and just all these uh esoteric fun little things that they've created just because they've gotten to know each other through homeroom, through class, and they are taking the community that we start them out with and running with it, which is exactly what we want them to do. So it's, yeah. it's really exciting and fun and gratifying to see. Sure. It's a perennial question. How do the Colby families connect with each other outside of class, especially when you foster such great relationships, get them off the ground this way, that they want to continue those conversations outside of class? The parents have Schoology accounts through which they can connect with each other, the parents. The, um, Colby doesn't give out the information directly. The parents connect with each other via Schoology. You can message each other that way. So it takes some tinkering with the notifications in Schoology. I think the trick that's the trick. First being signing into Schoology <laughs> and then tinkering with the notifications so that we are alerted when we receive messages from other parents that they're looking to connect and then we can go from there. So uh, that's one way of accomplishing that. The recent Friday updates have had instructions for this process and other ways to connect in the class Facebook groups that we reference a lot. Have there been any happy surprises or unexpected benefits of the homeroom courses? You've enumerated several benefits so far. Are there any others that come to mind? Anything that surprised you along the way? It surprised me how open they were to the quarterly check-ins and how much they wanted to keep talking. Like I kind of thought, uh, especially high school students, I kind of thought maybe they'd be hesitant or not sure because they don't know, they don't necessarily know me and yeah. maybe they haven't been used to having to discuss their grades with an adult. Um, so I was kind of, I've been happily surprised that they want to talk about it and they, they, are looking for support, but they also just kind of, I think they just kind of want to verbalize what's going on. And I think that's good for them to have to think about it. Like, okay, so maybe I've seen your grade kind of go down in this class. You want to talk about what's, why that's happening or what you think's going on. And then they have to kind of really reflect on, okay, why has my grade gone down and where am I? And you yeah. know, what is going on or, or what have I done? And like I said, sometimes it's celebration, like what did I change and why am I seeing a success here? And how do I feel about that? So I have been really pleasantly surprised and I've, I've really enjoyed it. That's great. Yeah. Seeing, seeing my girls prepare for their check-ins of doing their own self examines, basically go back to that Ignition idea of, of the exam and they're doing that for themselves and someone helping them do that. That's great to get them off to a good start that way. I've been pleasantly surprised by how much fun it's been <laughs> because, you know, you take on a class and you're like home room okay. Mm -hmm. And you're not sure what you're going to talk about. And then you come up with this slate of topics to talk about, and they're all pretty serious, you know, careers, college, spiritual life. Then you get into it and you get individual with the kids and you really hear wh what they think about these topics. And you kind of let the, them guide the conversation and talk about what is on their mind. And it is so nice to build that community around what they want to talk about. Even when you're talking about serious things, you can still find the lighthearted part of it, the valuable, the good, the beautiful, and the true in it. And so I've been pleasantly surprised by uh, not only how much fun it is, but how much they want to build community and how much I have gotten out of it too. It's been really great getting to focus on all these different topics and i've told them i'm like you guys by the time we're done in this class you will be you know ready to tackle college ready to tackle be an adult and perhaps i might even you know adult better myself too <laughs> and so it's been uh fun learning from each other i'll follow up with that definitely i agree with everything that's been said from the student perspective but 
from my perspective too, I was happily surprised that Colby had this program. Uh, one thing that made me really hesitant to teach online is whether I'd be able to connect with my students like we can in person. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we get into teaching not just for our love of the subject, but for our love of forming students. And so uh, this has been a, a wonderful joy to see my students outside of classes. And I've been delighted by the deep level of care that the students have. You know, there's this image of, you know, the stereotypical teenager. And as a mother, I've always been personally offended by that, you know, mm -hmm. let's, that's not necessarily true, right? Mm -hmm. And we need to have high expectations for them to strive for. And some of these characteristics that we may as parents and adults find troubling are there for a reason. But I, one of the blessings through our family's entire homeschool journey, which is now uh, getting close to uh, 20 years, <clears throat> uh, is seeing that in, in a healthy, holy environment, uh, adolescents just shine and they care so deeply and so passionately about themselves, about their communities, about their schoolwork, about their families. And it's been, a delight for me to to be able to see that unfolding before my very eyes in this new way. Uh, they they want to do well. They they want to please God. They want to be holy. They have these deep desires, and it's homeroom is one very small way of helping them to fulfill those and find ways, uh, productive, practical ways, uh, in order to do that. Well, just the opportunity that Homebroom offers to bring all these things together sort of uh, crystallizes when we can get so uh, myopic in the various subject areas. You, you give this opportunity to sort of look up and see big picture this way. So now that enrollment season is upon us, the, in, the application is open for new families wishing to join Colby next school year and pretty soon right around the time this episode airs, there will be information coming out to currently enrolled families on how to enroll again for next year and, and continue on the process of selecting courses and things like that. So the Colby website, colby.org, has information on how to start that enrollment application process. There was a school-wide address that was live streamed, the recording of which is available online. I'll be sure to post a link in the show notes for that so the families can hear about some of the things planned for next year. As we're wrapping up, do you all have any thoughts come to mind as we've been talking that you wanted to be sure we talked about? Or do you have any quick tips for a strong finish to this school year? It's hard to hang in here when we're starting to think about next year. So tips for finishing this year strong. This might be just a general message for seniors because I guess they're not really signing up for classes, but end of year tips you mentioned. And so mm -hmm. um, for my seniors, I'd like to remind them that May 1st is, you know, the pay your deposit for college day, uh, not May 2nd, May 1st, <laughs> Important. Yeah, April so 30th, perhaps even better. And also that, um, you know, senioritis, don't let it get you down, mm -hmm. that you still have to do your homework. And, you know, it's, yep. it's easy. It's just turn something in and, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> don't, don't uh, crash and burn just because you have senioritis. Anything, any grade is better than a zero. Yeah. Good. Very good. I wholeheartedly agree with Mrs. Crawford. Please just turn something in. And we have such passionate teachers at Colby. And every teacher has an office and office hours. And whether that's something that's regularly planned or is by appointment only, if you're tackling an assignment that you're confused about, you know, email your teacher, make an appointment for office hours. Uh, can you please help me get this done? I, I don't want it to be late or, you know, I'd like to get it finished by this date. Is that new due date okay with you? And can I meet with you in your office to go over the instructions one-on-one? Uh, -on -one? Sometimes students get hesitant to ask questions in an open forum or during class in front of everyone. So students, don't forget that your teachers are here for you. You want to see you succeed. So if you're encountering struggles with getting those assignments done because you're looking forward to Easter break and feel like you can't wait for it, email your teachers and make an appointment for office hours. We would love to help. And to piggyback on that, um, 
NHS peer tutoring still available. We are also actually about to launch an individual tutoring service uh, where families can make a request for an individual tutoring session with our NHS students. More news, more information will be coming up, out about that soon. But after you visited with your teacher in office hours, you can also go reach out and do peer tutoring with NHS. Right now it's available Mondays and Thursdays from 4.30 to 6. And then we will also be offering individualized by appointment tutoring sessions. So take advantage of all of these yeah, things. It's a great program. It's been great. Yes, for middle schoolers in this second semester, I would just continue to advise them to get involved. I mean, even though we're later in the school year, it's never too late to take advantage of all the opportunities to, to get to know your Colby school more. We have uh, NHS tutoring, yes, if you need help, but also uh, we have clubs, lots of clubs at Colby. Um, so the homeroom teachers, we kind of play point and, and help them navigate the different opportunities here. We have vocations days coming up uh, where there are no classes and they can go kind of attend a, a retreat like experience in March. So there's lots of good things coming up. So so look around and read the Friday memo. That, <laughs> that's like a refrain. I'm always telling my students, read the Friday memo. There's so many good things to know about. Yes, definitely that. Yep. I just wanted to give my last sales pitch for homeroom. Okay. <laughs> I That was the main reason I wanted to do this podcast because I just, and we've talked about it in our department meeting, how we just, we really feel like every single Colby student should take homeroom. And I, I think maybe in the past it was kind of like, we'll do it if we have time for a lot of families. But as you can see, we have this amazing faculty that's fully invested in it. We have all of these opportunities for students to socialize, to have support in their academic, spiritual, social journey. We have outside speakers, inside speakers. Anyway, I just want every Colby family to really consider it. And um, it is free if you're a full-time online student. It's part of, it's included in uh, your enrollment. If you're, if you're not full-time online, there is a fee, but it's, uh, it's totally worth it. I just feel like it's just a gold mine and I feel like we have so many other things that we can do with it. And then I think that we will just continue to develop more great ideas with this um, with this group of people and you know with the students that we have I think that the sky's the limit honestly and I, I would like to jump in Mrs. Momola's push to give homeroom a try for all of those families I mean because if you if you're if you've been especially if you haven't been involved in so if you're a parent and your children aren't really involved in any of the online classes this is just a great way, I think, to get exposed to the Colby community. I mean, we have thousands of students, 1,500 families out there, and we've got this great community. It's This is a great way to kind of participate a little bit more in that and to, you know, expand your community for prayer and getting to know other people who just that will support you in your homeschooling experience and, you know, get your children even more excited about that homeschooling experience already, right? It's wonderful. But when they're sharing that with everybody else, I think it, it, it just helps your, it'll help their family and it'll help our community as a whole. So give it a try if you haven't. It's been great hearing about this program. It's such a valuable component of, of Colby's many offerings. So as plans get underway for next school year, there needs to be a place for this in those plans. Colby will be hosting a shadow week for interested families to get a sense of what the online classes are like. That'll be the week of March 7th. So if you're listening to this episode as it comes out, that'll be coming up pretty quickly. I'll add a sign up link to the show notes. All right, Mrs. Mola, thank you for suggesting this episode to us. It's been fun as we've been planning it, working on it together. I've been looking forward to visiting with all of you today. It's been good seeing you guys. Nice to finally meet you, Mrs. Doucette. We've exchanged emails many times. It's nice to it's nice to visit with you, Mrs. Crawford, yes. Mrs. Kim. It's always great to see you guys. Thanks so much for coming. We consider you all part of our cast here in the Colby cast. So it's great to have you all back, and we look forward to the next time we get to visit with you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you, everyone. Pleasure. Thanks for having us. Thank you, everyone. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Colby Cast in your favorite podcast app to make sure you don't miss an episode. And we'd love to hear from you. So feel free to email us at podcast at colby.org. 
Mary, our mother, pray for us. St. Maximilian Kolbe, pray for us. Ad maiorem Dei Gloriam.